This is Pat Soundbites Unplugged. Unplugged, the podcast where all the artists go to tell it as it is. Careers, music, tours, and more. And here's your host, the man that refuses to eat squid, Pat Calamari. Hey, Pat Calamari here, the host of Pat Soundbites Unplugged. It is Friday, February the 7th. Um, rainy here in the Mid Hudson Valley. Uh, but certainly thank you for uh, listening, uh, TGIF to all. Been a busy couple of nights for me. And uh, although I have an interview coming up on Monday with Will Tark Turpin of uh, Collective Soul, my man Will, love that guy, love that band. Um, I figured I'd do an episode of uh, concert reviews. Uh, last night with Sons of Apollo at the Gramercy Theater in uh, New York City. And on Wednesday night was the band Dirty Honey at the Knitting Factory in Brooklyn. And uh, let me just start off with uh, Dirty Honey. Um, well, I've never been to the Knitting Factory before. Just a small little place. Um, general admission holds about 375 people. The folks, security guy, everybody was really cool. I got there early, got to meet the band hung out with them. They were just so friendly, super cool. Um, we're talking about Mark LaBelle. He's the lead singer. It's just something about him, just laid back, real young guys. Uh, John Notto on lead guitar, another super guy hanging out, chatted with him. Uh, Justin Smurling on bass, Corey Cloverstone on drums. Um, there's something about this band. When I first got wind of this band and started to hear When I'm Gone, I said, hmm. And I'm a, like a blues rock guy. And they've been they've been compared to like a Zeppelin thing. And Mark is a big fan of Robert Plant. The whole band is a, is a, is a fan of obviously Led Zeppelin. But there's just something different. They're not Greta Van Fleet. Greta is a little bit younger. And those guys are really good. I'm not here to knock them at all. And they get a more, you know, sounding like a Zeppelin. But there's something about Dirty Honey. And the band played so tight. They were so cool. I mean, they were walking up and down the street, getting a bite to eat, talking to people, taking pictures. It was like no big deal for them whatsoever. They kick the show off. I mean, their debut album is just insane. They kick the show off with Scars. Then they got into... Uh, Break You and Fire Away, a new song, The Wire. One of my favorite songs is Heartbreaker. And um, Mark's got a, just a normal knack for, you know, getting getting together with the crowd and getting them involved and everybody singing back. Everybody knows the song. The place was sold out. And they just make it like they've been polished and doing this for a long time. And um, I'm telling you, they got a taste on like a modern classic rock mixed with a blues folk type melody thing going on. I mean, I just love it. It's the Rolling Sevens tour. Um, they just, they were really cool. Um, real enthusiastic response from the crowd. Mark is just the way he sings, it's just very um, sultry and real tender and real easy. Makes his way moving around the stage. And John and Justin are running around, jumping up and down. But the band and Corey was super on drums. Great drum solo. Um, John, great. I mean, they all did a little solo. John did a solo. Um, they did uh, because Slash took them... Uh, was the first one to take them as an opening for for Slash, and they became really close friends. And they learned that one of Slash's favorite albums was Aerosmith's "Rocks," and in a tribute to Slash, they played "Last Child," and they really hit it out of the park. And in uh, down the city on Wednesday, they also did um, "Whole Lot of Love," which was really cool. But John did a solo. Corey did a solo, um, Justin did a solo, and um, I mean, the place wanted more. I think after 14 songs, they even came up with a, another new song called Tied Up. It was pretty cool. Um, 
it, there, there, there's something to be reckoned with. There's something about this. But I'm, I, I couldn't wait for this show. I couldn't wait to meet them. I did interview Mark last October in an Uber car in Chicago. And uh, he's a New York guy. So it was kind of a homecoming for him, even though he lives in the Capital District. But uh, it was a great, great show. I encourage everybody to support this band. I'm looking forward to see the follow-up. I mean, I think The Wire is going to be certainly on the next album. They're going to go back to Australia and uh, redo, you know, come up with album number two. I mean, they're not even signed. I mean, no label. Who, an independent, I mean, who does this? But I give them credit. They're, there's something about it. They're going places. If Take my word. If you haven't heard from them, if you haven't seen them, they're a force to be reckon with uh, especially you know they're not a run-of-the-mill hard rock revival band at all they kick ass and i'm telling you they're a band to follow very closely these guys are destined for the big leagues they're that good so there's my take on dirty honey i'm a fan i'm playing tracks on this sunday of dirty honey no doubt about it now, last night at the Gramercy Theater in New York City, Sons of Apollo. I mean, this is like a super group and then some. Mike Portnell, Billy Sheehan, Derek um, Chavar, yeah, I always screw up his name. Um, Ron Bumblefoot and Jeff Scott Soto. Derek Sheehan, thank you. Uh, Derek and Mike with Dream Theater, Billy from Mr. Big, Bumblefoot with everybody, and Jeff Scott Soto. He had his band, obviously, Soto. And, I mean, these guys were an oiled machine supporting their third album. Uh, it's entitled MMXX, or as we all call it, 2020. And uh, if you love prog rock, these guys are the best of the best. I mean, they just kicked ass. I want to say it was like a 16-song set. They played for two hours. The show was incredibly high energy, um, a lot of complex time signature stuff. They were interactive. I mean, the minute they got on stage, Jeff got the crowd going from the first song to the last song. Um, they kicked off with Goodbye Divinity and Fall to Ascend which is off this new album. They got the crowd going nuts. Um, they played a lot from their, um, this is their second album, I should say, their debut album, Psychotic Sympathy. They jumped into Signs of Time. Um, and their other uh, great songs from that album, Lost in Oblivion, Alive, God of the Sun. I mean, these are like staples of this band. They even did a, uh, a great version of Wither to Black, which was dedicated to the recently departed Rush drummer, the great Neil Peart, in, in the middle of an um, in, in the middle of the Wither to Black song. They paid homage to their uh, Canadian heroes by playing a killer section, I should say, of Tom Sawyer, and the crowd just went crazy. They, I mean, they're 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 the best of the best, um, and then the solos from Derek, the solos from Billy, the solos from Bumblefoot. They play new songs, Asphyxiation, uh, King of Delusion. Uh, they did a real special, moving rendition of Desolate July to dedicate to their falling brother Dave Z. Um, it was like uh, I talked to Jeff after the show, met him. And I said, man, what a, what a tribute. And he said, man, I was shaking. And they did 16-minute uh, epic of a new song called New World Today, which really tore the place down. I mean, just nonstop playing. They ended on an encore doing Deep Purple's Burn, which was over the top. And, um, you know, this group was melodic, was heavy, had some trash, had a, had a little metal, but they were just having fun. And uh, they really hit it off last night in New York City. 
Um, they just, it really shows that they true, truly enjoy making music together. If you get a chance, go check out Sons of Apollo, buy this album 2020, and check out the videos. It was great. Tonight, I go see Cheap Trick in Albany. Cheap Trick, over, I don't know, 5,000 shows, and they still are going better and better. I had a great interview with Rick Nielsen. If you copied, check that out on my podcast. Great chat with Rick. Learned a lot about him. He was really honest and uh, upfront and really cool. So looking to see Cheap Trick probably for my 15th time. Support them guys. They're going to be in Canada with ZZ Top again. They're going on tour in the summertime with Rod Stewart. Um, Who doesn't love Cheap Trick? So that's my report for today. Episode number 38. It's Friday. It's raining. Be careful out there. We're still in winter. I don't care what that rodent groundhog says. And only in America do we listen to what a rodent says, whether we're going to have six more weeks of snowy and crappy weather or spring's going to be early. I mean, only in America do we believe in crap like this. But anyway, have a great weekend. Don't forget to catch me on WBXO on Sundays from 5 to 8. If you have a request, go to my Facebook page. Go to the BXO Facebook page. Hit the like button. Tell me what you want me to play. I do my best in keeping new music alive on the radio airways. And that's Dirty Honey and that's Sons of Apollo. And certainly, Cheap Trick has always been putting out something. I always play Cheap Trick. Love those guys. So, WBXO, Classic Rock. Check out the website. We redid the website. Kind of more polished and fresh. And uh, WBXO Classic Rock Redefined, meaning we create whatever we music we want to create. A rarity in the radio business. Again, have a great weekend. Thanks for supporting Pat Soundbites Unplugged. Live, love, and laugh a lot because life is way too short. See ya.